Hi, and welcome back. This is White Armor Consulting. And have you ever wondered how to secure your Android device? Stay tuned, and I will help you to protect your Android with eight simple steps. Here I will show you eight simple steps to secure your new or old Android phone. Now keep in mind, how I configure all these settings may be different in your flavor of Android. But generally, all Androids have these settings. Let's begin. First, we're going to enable encryption. Open up your Samsung, swipe down, tap the gear, and you're going to scroll down until you find a section called security. Tap that and look for encryption. From here, you're going to tap secure startup or start encryption, encrypting your device. This ensures your data is protected if your device is lost or stolen. When your device reboots or starts up, it will present you with a boot up password before the operating system will load. If the password is not entered correctly, the phone will not load the operating system. This ensures all your data is encrypted and cannot be accessed in the wrong hands. Now write this password down in case you forget it and save it in a safe place or put it in your password manager. From here, it'll ask you to plug your phone in to the power charger. You'll click OK. You'll put in your backup password and then it'll start encrypting your device. It'll take about an hour to encrypt. And if you want to ever undo the, the encryption, you're going to need to factory restore. Now this does slow down the device a little bit because the encryption needs time to boot, but I haven't noticed it and I have an old device. From here, if you want to encrypt your SD cards, protect those as well with the same mechanism. You just plug in your SD card and then encrypt it. That way if the SD card ever gets lost, it's password protected as well. From here, we'll move on to step two, which is Disabling Google Personalized Ads. From here, all you're going to do is you're going to scroll up or down and you're going to look for Google. Under Google, you're going to look for ads and then opt out of ads personalization. You're going to turn this option on. So everything that you do on your Android device gets built under this advertising ID. And this is how Google can track you and then display ads based on your behavior. We don't want that, so we'll turn this on. Next, we're gonna to go to step three, which is enabling Samsung slash Google Find My Phone. From here, what you're gonna do is you're gonna scroll down and you're gonna look for security. You're gonna look for Find My Device. Now under here, you're gonna to need to create an account with Samsung, and then it will turn on the options that you'll be able to use in case you lose your device or you ever forget your passcode of that device. It gives you many options that you can use. You can also go back and under security, it also has the same option called find my mobile remote controls. You can also turn on reactivation lock, which is the device cannot be activated unless it has your permission. When you're all done creating this, you'll be able to log into a website that looks like this, findmymobile.samsung.com, and you'll get access to these options. Ring, even if your phone is silent or vibrate or in vibrate mode, you'll be able to ring for an hour or one minute, sorry. You'll be able to lock your device with a new passcode. You'll be able to factory reset your device in case you lose it. You'll be able to extend the battery life. You'll be able to unlock in case you forget the password or PIN. You'll be able to retrieve calls or messages in case the phone gets lost and is accessed and used remotely. That way it allows you to figure out where it is or who's using it. You can also set guardians in case you lose the password or your Samsung account gets hacked. You can have guardians be able to initiate these options from their Samsung account. After that, we're going to move on to step four, 
which is application protection. From here, all you're gonna do is you're gonna go back up to Google, tap it, scroll down till you get to security. And then you're gonna look for Google Play Protect. From here, you'll scroll down and you're gonna turn on these two options. Now what this does is any app you download to your Android will be sent to Google for scanning. If it's potentially harmful, then they will block it or warn you. And any apps that aren't from the Google Play Store will also get sent there and scanned. So you get app protection. From here, we'll move on to step five, which is enabling the screen lock settings. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to hit go back. Once you get to this screen, you're going to go to the screen lock option. For my device, it's under device, then screen lock. Scroll down until you see lock instantly with power key. Turn that on. And then you're going to want to make sure that lock automatically is on either immediately or within this prescribed amount of time. Pick Pick one that is best for you. I selected five seconds. What this means is that when you press the power button on your device, it will lock instantly. And lock automatically means that if you leave your device laying around, it will lock after a prescribed amount of time. Now I also turned off camera shortcut and action memo on lock screen. I also turned those off. So when the lock screen is enabled, I don't want my camera enabled. And I also don't want the action memo enabled as well. Now you can uh, turn on show information and you can put special information on the main lock screen. So in case you lose your device, maybe there's a number they can phone or an address they can send the device to, you can enable that and display it. From here, we're gonna move on to step six, which is disabling OK Google Trusted Voices. So from here, we're going to go back to Google, scroll down until you find search assistant and voice, tap that, tap voice. And from here, you're going to want to look for voice match, tap that. Now my phone is too old, so it doesn't have the function, but what you want to do is you want to turn off access with voice match, and you also want to turn off unlock with voice match. That way they don't use your voice to unlock your device. There's been many hacks where your voice will just unlock your device and then someone will have access to it. From there, we're gonna go to step seven, which is lock screen privacy. From here, what you're gonna wanna do, now what this means is when messages pop up on your lock screen, you don't want them to be displayed for the world to see. So what we wanna do is we wanna still see the notifications, but we don't want them displayed. So from your device, you're gonna look for sounds and notifications. Now yours might be different, but you're gonna to wanna to look for the section or notifications on lock screen. From here, you can either do not show notifications at all, hide the content so you still see that there is a notification, but it doesn't display the message. Now this will be for anything, uh, text messages, WhatsApps, um, any kind of message, it'll still display, but it won't show the content or you can show the content. My advice is to just do hide content or don't display at all. After that, we're gonna go on to step eight, which is enable data usage cap and billing cycle, protect your mobile data from being overused or if your phone ever gets stolen and someone gets access to your device they can't use your data uh, past that point because it'll be locked to the device they can change these options but let's see how it's done so from here what you're going to want to do is swipe down tap the gear and look for data usage once you're inside this you can hit the down arrow and you're going to want to make sure that it's set to the cycle of your device of sorry of your billing cycle 
So you can find that out through phoning your provider. After you know your cycle, you can set a mobile limit, whatever your limit is of your device. You can then set it to that limit by moving these arrows up and down, and then you can have it set a warning. Now when it hits this limit, it's going to turn off the mobile data, saving you from going over, which will save you money as well. And that's about everything. If you follow these steps, you should be well on your way to better Android security and privacy. Also make sure to use the biometrics like fingerprint or facial recognition for increased protection and always have a complex passcode or pattern for your password. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed and found this video helpful. Thanks and take care.